We're here today in front of our DTF printer and we need to talk about calibration and how do we do it because I've got a problem myself with the white ink not going exactly where it's supposed to be and in line with my color print so we're going to have a look at why it's happening and then we're going to go to our computer and show you from start to finish how to calibrate and explain everything in total so let's get to it okay so if you have a look here we can see our white ink is protruding out of our artwork and it's mainly on the one side and there is virtually no white ink protruding on this side basically what we wanted to do is have the white ink hidden behind your print so it almost looks like this T here where you can't see any white ink behind it even though what we don't want is this here so let's go to our software and start so our first position here is our head install now this is purely for our technicians so that they can install the print head from scratch and that is your vertical adjustment left and right tilt and that's just to adjust the head accordingly until it is 100% flat. What we're going to do is go to our step adjust. Now this is the first setting that you're going to choose and the first thing you're going to do is go ahead and push print adjust. From there it's going to print a little piece of artwork that you're going to choose the best setting from and from there you're going to go ahead and input it in and say calculate. From there you can go ahead and print adjust again to make sure and verify that your settings are correct. But the one that we are most interested in because that one's very easy to do is your head space. This one is the most difficult to adjust so you need to pay attention to what I'm saying here. So we're going to start off with our horizontal adjust. And now we just need to speak about, in general, two different printers here so that you can understand what you're actually doing. Now, we have got the DTF 600, there's also the DTF 300. And those have both got two heads each, one for color and one for white. Now, you've got head one and head two. As you can see here on the screen, your head one is on the left and head two is on the right. But now we've also got left and right adjustment. So your head one, which should be color, and head two should be white. But it's not too much of a problem if they are the other way around. You just need to remember which one you want to adjust. Do you want to adjust your black or color? Or do you want to adjust your white head? So first things first, we need to just think about are they offset or are they straight? So the best explanation is that I've got a print head here and I've got a print head here which are in line with each other. Let's just say they're like this. That is on the DTF 300. But because we've got the DTF 600, our heads are slightly distanced from each other and a diagonal. So your head one will be the closest one to you on the left and head two will be the furthest one to the right away from you. And normally those two will run together but they are separate. So what we need to do is tell the printer and software that the heads need to print in a line and not away from each other. Otherwise you get that double print that we saw with the white and black. But let's start on the screen here. We're gonna go ahead and start with our horizontal. And the first thing we need to do is say print adjust. Okay, so we are here after we've just printed our first adjust and now we've got white in between and then black on top and bottom. And what we want to do is find the best number here and you'll look at your plus, right? And what we're gonna do is the bottom is your left hand side of your adjustment and the top is the right hand side of your adjustment. What I'm gonna do is we look at your white and what we need to do is line up with your black. So what I'll do is I'll find the best position that that is occurring and I will pick that number. For me right now, I'm looking at between the plus four and plus six as the area of which I am going to choose one of those three. I would go with a plus five. So now that we know that that's the number I wanna go for, we're gonna take this to the printer and then we're going to change this number here. So plus five. So we know that we've got to do a plus five. Now, without knowing if the plus five is meant for head number one or head number two, because we've got two adjustments, we've got the level at the top of that print and we've got the level at the bottom. So now I am going to take the, the, the option of changing head one here and I'm going to plus five onto four. 
So the best thing here is to just go five plus four, which means nine. And then we're gonna go and print a, the adjustment again. And once we have had a look at it, if it looks worse, then we know not to adjust head number one. We leave head number one alone and we'll adjust head number two, five up from there and then put our head one back to four. So let's quickly go to five plus, so that will be nine then. And then you make sure that you go in ahead and push save once it's saved its parameter because you have to do this every time you adjust any settings you push save from there wait for it to do its save then you're going to load the settings and that will load the settings back to the printer so it's stored there for the next time you print so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do a print adjust you only do print verify once you know that you're happy and you think that you're correct just to verify that it is correct so again we'll push print adjust The idea is that we need to get the white ink in line with these black squares on zero so that we know that it's zeroed in. So now if we look it was plus five was the best, but now it's even further and now it looks like it's plus 11. So what we're going to do is go back to our program, change that head one to four, and then we are going to adjust head uh, the head one, but the right hand side adjustment to plus five on top of that number and then we'll do a print verify to make sure that we are correct on what we've done. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to our head one uh, for the left hand side and we're gonna go to head two and plus five to that. So plus five to that number should be 61. So we go to 61 and again, we need to push save and once save is done, we can then push load and then I'm gonna print verify to make sure that what I've done is actually correct. Okay, so now that we've done our last print adjust print here, and this is for again the left hand side, we still need to do the right hand side. But now if we have to look at zero and we look at where this white is sitting, I'm almost certain that we are good to go on, on this number. You could do finer adjustments and take much longer by just fiddling with each number until you are far not happy with your adjustment. So you can even go further if you wanted to in adjusting this better. But by just looking at it, I'm happy with where it is now at zero. And then we're going to leave it here at that setting. And now we're gonna move over to our next one. Now that we are done with our left adjustment, now we need to do our right adjustment. And the same goes there, we're going to leave our four alone. And if not, you can put it to zero and then just make sure you push save and load first. But we're gonna go ahead and push print adjust for the right hand side. And then we're gonna go ahead and look at those details to see which one is the best. All right, so having a look at our scale here, to be very honest with you, looking at all these numbers here, I am more likely to go ahead and say plus three to the setting because that's what the best number looks like in terms of the white lining up with the black. Also keep in mind if you are going to rub, this ink hasn't dried yet so it will erase out. So you need to just be careful as you're moving around. But for me, by the looks of it, it looks like plus three is definitely going to be my best option here. So we're going to go ahead and put that in and we're going to save and then load it and then we'll move on to our next setting. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to adjust the one on the right hand side and again we're going to do the head two, which is our white. And all I needed to do was plus three, so that's going to take us to 68 on that one. Then we're going to go ahead and push save and once that's done we push load and we're going to move over to our next setting. Okay, so now that we've finished with our horizontal, now we need to do our vertical. So we click on our vertical option there and you just got to click on it. Now that that's popped up again, we have only two options here. We've got head one and head two. Now, as I've said before, you can always just leave head one at zero and you just adjust head two only. In this case, it's at zero already and we're going to go ahead and just leave that. We'll print the setting here and see which is the best. Okay, so now that we've printed our vertical adjustment, we have got two different options. Our first option is this graph here. 
And then our second option is the one on the right hand side. But if we're looking at this one first, have a look at where that arrow is in a line with the zero on that line there. You can see it is just ever so slightly out. But this one is difficult to read. So I'm going to focus my attention more on this graph on the right hand side. So as you can see where I'm pointing with this knife, you can see a white line. Now you have to make sure that this white line is in line with the two black lines within this block that I'm pointing at. But for me in this case, zero is perfect and it's already aligned because the white line that I'm indicating here right now is in line with the two black lines within that block. So from this, we're gonna quickly show you if we had to change it on the software and then we'll move on to our next setting. Okay, so we're back here again. And like I was saying on head number two is the adjustment that we were going to change. And that is at 181. So for instance, mine was at zero, so I'll leave it as it is. But if you were to change it, all you gotta do is click on here and add that plus three or plus four, even minus, depending on which one is better for you. And then again, once you're done, you just go ahead, push save, and then load. So now that we've done that, we're gonna head on to our next setting, which is color adjust. Now, as you can see, everything here is zero, and that is for a very specific reason. And I'm going to just say this right now, it is a warning, do not touch this setting whatsoever. Otherwise you will cause big color mistakes and you will not be able to fix it yourself other than turning it back to zero, but please do not touch the setting at all. It is purely for the actual technicians to make sure that they do their job correctly. And if it's on zero, that means there's nothing to be done. So do not change it. The next thing we're gonna do is go on to our bi-directional adjustment. This one is very simple. All we need to do is go ahead and push print adjust. And once we've done that, it's going to print some artwork. We again need to choose the best one, input it here, and then push save and load. And then from there, we can then print our original artwork and see if we've done the correct things. Okay, so we're here at our printer and we've printed our last bi-directional uh, adjustment print. And as you can see, if we look on the right-hand side here, this is the worst one as well as the furthest left one. Now, as you can see, our black uh, rectangles that are on the furthest right-hand side are not lining up with the center black line. So that's what you want to achieve with this one here, is to find the best results as you're going and see whether or not it is zero. If it's zero is not your best uh, version of this print, then if it is a minus number, then you're going to minus the number on the software. Or if it's a plus, you're plus to that number. So if our number was 23 and we needed to plus four, then that would be 27 and not 23. Once you've done that, all you need to do is go and push save and then load directly afterwards. And now your adjustments are completely finished. And now we just need to print our original artwork and see if it came out better than when we started. Okay, so now we have got a comparison of before we started calibrating and after. And as you can see, with the amount of white that is protruding towards you compared to what it is now. Now that is what you actually want to achieve. Because within your program, before you go and print, you can actually choke the amount of white in your actual artwork so it prints within this border of let's say this letter so if i had to turn it around basically what i'm saying is that you would print less white and it groups it further in within your artwork now depending on what color garment you're going to be heat pressing on depends on whether or not this white and very slight white that's on the outsides is actually going to be a problem for you or it's going to disappear once you heat press it because if you're doing light colored shirts then this is not a problem if you're doing black and you don't want to see any white, then you need to choke the white, the spot color itself specifically, which is possible through the software. Well, there you have it, guys. That is calibration for the DTF in a nutshell. And now, like I said before, the DTF 300 is easier to calibrate purely because the heads are already in line with each other, unlike the 600 behind me where they are slightly offset. So if you pay attention to those steps that I've shown you and do it slowly and do those fine adjustments, 
on the actual sheets and look at it carefully then you'll end up with the perfect calibration like I've got here and that's exactly what we wanted to do today but again stay away from those panels that I told you to otherwise you'll have more harm than good when you're doing your calibration and again thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one AI may eventually take over, but what's for certain is that smart machines are already operating all over the world right now. So stay ahead with am.co.za. For 11 years, they've been leader in CNC and printing machines like CNC rotors, large format printers, vinyl cutters, laser cutters, plasma cutters, DTF printers and many more. Visit am.co.za showrooms in Sunny Rock, Joburg and Montenegro Gardens, Cape Town or WhatsApp high to 060 600 6000 for more info. am.co.za. Achievement matters.